Hi, it's Brad from Transart Am here with Soba for Pros. I thought I'd kind of give you guys a little bit of information about what Soba for Pro is all about. Well, there's lots of subwoofers in the marketplace. Almost all of them are built to go with some specific brand of monitors. But a lot of those that are built for those monitors work really well with their monitors, but not so good with somebody else's. They have features in them, like let's say DSP or tuning in them. Let's say the crossover that's all geared around a specific set of monitors that the company is trying to sell with their sub. Well, what I was really interested in at Trans Audio was how could we get a line of subs that were sort of universal? You could use them with everything and they would sound good. Uh, why can't we have a line of subs that the boxes are really small and they don't have to be so large and heavy? And then how about subs that really just sort of focus on 100 hertz on down and do well down to 20 hertz and even below that point. If I wanted a, a sub that works all the way down to 16, could I have that? Um, so we focused on trying to get that category sort of fulfilled. We wanted it to be self-powered. We wanted it to have very few uh, controls on it because the truth is when I did have monitors or subs that had a lot of controls on it, people have a tendency to kind of get confused and not show exactly how to set them up. And they're referring to owner's manual, which eventually they're throwing away and then they just don't know how to set them up. So I wanted to make sure we had a sub kind of like, you know, when you want to buy a really good vocal mic, you want instant magic on the stand. You don't want to have to sit and fiddle around with EQ. Same thing with the sub here. I want a sub that sounds good. I don't have to tweak it. I don't have to fiddle with it. Basically all I got to do is determine at what point do I want to have it work below. So if I want it to work from 95 hertz on down, if I want it to work from 60 hertz on down, if I want it to work from even lower, I can do that. And so our focus was to have a line of subs that were really designed to add on to an existing pair of monitors of any brand and would blend in. Meaning that so many subs are built that you plug your monitors into the sub and then from the sub it routes to the monitors. Well, the problem is with that whole idea is that every time I do that, every time I've heard that, the sub degrades the sound of the main monitors. It's not as, the signal passing through the sub isn't as good as running a direct feed to the monitors. I can hear the difference. So I want a sub that I don't have to hook up my mains to. I just want to run a parallel feed, a parallel left right to the mains and a parallel left right to the subs or if I have uh, one sub and I'm running in mono, both inputs, I should be able to sum. If I can't do that, then I want to be able to uh, uh, just hook up one and have it be mono. I'll set up the mono source from elsewhere. So give me something simple I can add on to a monitor and have it work. Since we're not focused on trying to match up to a specific loudspeaker, you really now are just sort of thinking about what size sub do I need? And here's the thing. with the, Subwoofer Pros, almost all these subs sound remarkably similar, meaning the only difference is really how loud they play. We don't really have a situation where the 10 has a lot, you know, sounds way different than the 12. Well, the 12 sounds way different than the 18. That actually isn't true. The 18 plays louder than the 12 or the 10. The 10 is much less expensive, so it's more akin to a situation where you want to use multiples. We're really big on the idea that uh, we think an evolving part of the subwoofer business is where people use more of them at lower level to fill out a room rather than one big one in a room to give them horsepower. So we sort of are fond of the idea of smaller subs distributed about the room give you a better result than one big one. So subwoofer pros is really designed to be fairly modular. You can just add it on to almost any speaker you want. You don't filter the main speaker you're using it with. Run that speaker full range. And then come to your sub where you just plug in a balanced XLR input and set the frequency at which you want it to work below. So let's say if we're using a pair of uh, six inch two ways, we'd set the thing to its highest point, 95 hertz. And so it will give you sub from 95 hertz on down to very low frequency, 20 hertz, even 16. So if you have a larger monitor, you might want to set it to go start working even lower so that there's less point at which both the sub and the mains are working on the same signal. 
you want to just have the sub do the things the mains cannot do. So then you might set it to lower. You might set it to 65. You might set it to 40. You might set it there. And this new Subwoofer Pros 10 is sort of the first of a series that has a new input panel that has four choices for uh, frequencies in the back. And so you can make sure you can choose what frequency you want. So with our subs, you just simply feed it the same signal you're sending it to the mains. You use a Y cord, you can set it to parallel feed, you can hook it up to your monitor controller and just use it as another one of the pairs. You can treat it as a mono sub, you can do whatever you wanna do, and it all still works. And then what you do is you set it up to blend with your mains and adjust the level on the sub so it's not overpowering the mains. So we blend to taste. We don't set it up so that the sub is so loud that you can hear it all the time. In fact, it should sort of sound, speaker and sub should sort of sound together like you don't even hear the sub unless you turn it off. Then you notice a difference. But it should blend in with the mains in a pretty easy way. Also, we, we like to start with the sub as close to the mains as possible. Doesn't mean it needs to face forward. You can try facing it backwards or to the side. You can, should experiment with all those positions of the sub because rooms are very difficult when it comes to low frequency and moving a sub around is a super critical thing. You can get it as close as possible to the mains, but here's the thing to avoid. Don't put it at the same exact dimension distance wise left to right. So if your left sub, if you have two subs and you have a left one, don't put it exactly underneath the speaker at exactly three feet from the wall. Put that one to the side of the speaker and it's two feet from the wall. Put the other one under the speaker and it's three feet from the wall. Vary the distances the sub is from all the surfaces. But the goal is with subs is that what you do is once you get them hooked up, get a decent level, is now experiment with moving them around the room and see what positions work best. I once was in a setup with a bunch of small subs where there was one on each of the four walls of a very small space. And on that wall, they were each at a different distance left to right from the corners on all four walls so that you had all these irregular distances throughout the room for these very small subs. It worked really well for making the bass feel very even in the room. And you didn't feel that bass, bass buildup on the back wall like you normally do, nor did you feel a null in the front of the room where the mains are. So you can experiment with moving the subs around and you should. You know, one of the things that's great about them is you can just sort of push them around in the room, pick them up and move them and try to find out spots where they work better or worse. It's all good to know where the base goes away. And that's always going to be for a relatively, a relatively fixed listening position. So sit in at your mix position and then get up and start moving the sub around until you find it. It's at its loudest point. That's where you want to leave it. And then if you add another sub, do the same thing there. Now just move that one around so it sounds like it works the best in a certain position and keep going. What you want to do is to use your ears and listen to where these subs are placed. So we have a sub for pros, really three choices, a sub 10, a sub 12, and a sub 18. All are very small. The sub 10 is perfectly appropriate for six inch two ways. The sub 12 is really good for a little bit larger speakers that need a little bit more output. And the sub 18 is suitable for any size monitor. And what also is nice is you can use these in multiples to get more output. Remember, just like with live sound, you, you double the number of speakers, you gain output. So do use your subs the same way. Um, so in you, buying subs and living with subs, trying to get them integrated to your speaker system and try to move them around the room so they sound good, is the number one thing to do. And it isn't so much about getting one sub that plays super loud. It's about getting a sub that has quality. So what we tried to focus on with our line of subwoofer pros was not to shoot for maximum horsepower. It was to shoot for detail and low distortion. Well, there's a number of ways to do that. And so all of our subs are sealed. There's no uh, port in them. There's no base reflex in them. There's no passive radiator, they're just completely sealed. And then we use the infrasonic, uh, we use the infra system, it's developed by a company called Bag End that extends the low frequency response of a driver down very, very low. And so we use that technology and that really helps 
and getting output down low out of a very small box. It's really the best way to go about it in the modern world of having to move your, your speaker system around. You're gonna be at this studio for a while, then that studio. And some of the pros are really designed to be about as portable as you can make them. So again, we have three different sizes. You can add multiples, you can stick with just a pair. You can use just one if you need to, but I recommend one is not the best plan because it usually excites the room a single mode the most. But using, I'd rather see you use two small 10s and one big 18. So that's sort of the big overview about subwoofers from Transaudio and Subwoofer Pros.